All glory to the Hypnotoad. Hey ghosts, welcome back to the intersection of fantasy and reality. This week I'm exploring the hypnagogic state. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I'm a little fascinated with out-of-body experiences, hallucinations, and essentially not living in reality. And the hypnagogic state involves tapping into the moment between sleeping and consciousness. Slonchousness? So I heard the term hypnagogic state through an article, but it turns out that I already had heard of it, I just didn't know it had a name. I was aware that everybody's favourite problematic abstract daddy, I mean Dally, would fall asleep with a spoon in his hand so that when it fell to the floor it would wake him up and he could paint his abstract visions. Imagine being like, I've got to get to work, time for a nap. According to the article, the technique was also used by Thomas Edison and Albert Einstein in order to solve math problems. I guess some of us dream of abstract fantasy lands and some of us understand the symbols and the math meme. It's said that the hypnagogic state lasts two minutes and your muscles are relaxed but you're still aware of your surroundings. Then you might begin to imagine sounds and visions. Am I always in the hypnagogic state? I'm imagining sounds and visions all the time thanks to synesthesia. You know what I discovered the other day? I was watching a film and I realised that it tasted like blood. And I was editing a TV show the other day and it tasted like beer. I think I might have a synesthesia where media is converted into taste. I am being studied by a university at the moment. Anyway, the Paris Brain Institute is investigating what happens to our brains when we experience the hypnagogic state. The research involved more than 100 people who find it easy to fall asleep, which let's talk about. When I was a kid, I could stay up all night long. I did not need sleep. And I've always found that I have a lot of energy at night. Do we all go through a shift in our lives where sleeping just becomes incredibly difficult? Or am I just burdened with responsibility and pain and now I can't sleep? Anyway, the 100 plus people were given some math problems to solve and a very convoluted method of solving them. The problems they were given could be solved much quicker, but they weren't given those <laughs> methods. I don't know why I lost the word for methods there. This is how little I talk about math. I've lost the vocabulary. So they didn't have access to the easier method to find the solution and they were just following the step-by-step -step guide on how to do the long version. And apparently 16 participants were able to think of the faster solutions by themselves. Which is great and all because you have a super brain but then you don't get to take part in the fun. Unlike people who didn't figure out the faster solution, who did get to take part in the hypnagogic state, but after 60 problems, that's like torture to me. 60 feels a bit excessive. So they were given 20 minutes to rest in a chair and they were to hold a cup in their hand and they were asked to close their eyes and rest. If they dropped the cup, they were asked to open their eyes immediately and say out loud their last thought. I would pay money to read those transcripts. Porn. So the results showed that spending approximately 15 minutes in the hypnagogic state, 15 seconds, 15 minutes, it only lasts two. If they spent 15 minutes, no, seconds. Oh my God, my brain is scrambled. If they spent 15 seconds in the hypnagogic state, they were more likely to find the solution. How likely you might ask? Three times as likely. Everything, I. My brain's just mush. I'm a member of Mensa. However, this effect disappeared if the subjects went into deeper sleep. And I'm sure you know what comes next. Time to start tapping into my hypnagogic state. Like I said, I don't find it super easy to fall asleep. So this could take a while. I might have to try a few different things. I have a spoon, but my flat is largely carpeted. So I don't know if I'll actually wake up at the sound of this hitting the floor. Maybe. Yeah, okay, I didn't think that was gonna work. So I was thinking about how the brain scientists use this as a way to solve problems and I thought, hmm, do I have any problems I would like to solve? Of course I do. I've been writing a short film about the gateway experience. Yes, if you are one of the many people waiting for more gateway action, I'm on it, I promise you. I'll be making a follow-up video based on two years of practicing The Gateway, which is gonna come out in May. But at the same time, I've been writing a short film about 
using the gateway experience and what that looks like. It's a fiction and so I have two characters and they are going to be exploring the gateway experience. But I haven't written what happens to them in their out of body experience yet. So the hypnagogic state is my story prompt. <laughs> no. I think it would be better if you went and had your own hypnagogic experience somewhere. Okay, here goes. So basically, with it being the middle of the day, me having had a lot of caffeine this morning, me being very aware that I'm holding a spoon and trying to fall asleep on camera, it's just not happening. So I'm gonna try this overnight. My brain's just like really active at the moment. When I was lying there, I was thinking about my short film and the things that I have written for it so far. And then I kind of in my mind thought, oh, this would be a really good idea. But that was completely all conscious. There was nothing hypnagogic about it. Maybe math problems help you get there. I don't know. Well, hello, I'm here with my spoon and we are going to experience the hypnagogic state. I now realize that I've actually filmed myself in my bed on several occasions for YouTube. And that's not a normal thing that people do. It's 10 to midnight and I actually should just go to sleep. I'm so tired, but I am doing this in the name of science slash YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna have to like lie this over the bed. This is awkward. Why do I do this to myself? I didn't drop the spoon. Probably because of my camera bed thing. I had this little dream where me and some people were setting up a camera looking like down on the bed like this because I was like, hmm, how would we shoot it if we wanted to see a bird's eye view? And then someone was screaming, not in a scary way, in a melodic way, if that makes sense. My uh, skills of holding things whilst I sleep are quite good. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Well, I don't know what to do with this. I actually think I've had a few, but because the spoon didn't fall, I like, I didn't stop. So basically I dreamt, hip, hypnagogued. I saw a woman and she had like really long, dark, silky hair and she was wearing a red dress. And she turned to me and said, you're beautiful. It's my brain just giving me a little pep talk. That happened and then I was like aware again, I was conscious again, but I didn't wake up because the spoon was still in my hand and I don't know, maybe I was just comfortable and hoping I would fall asleep. Then I had a vision of someone running down a street and then I had a vision where I was looking at a sunset and there was a silhouetted figure sitting looking at the sunset and I couldn't make out who they were but then someone else said to me he says these things and he doesn't realize that we still think about them and then I woke up and that's where we are now this is quite fun actually bizarre but fun so the hypnagogic state happens to me sometimes out in the wild I might have had a really really trying day and I come home and I put on some YouTube videos and I'm lying on the couch and then I just find myself falling asleep. And you can hear what's happening in the videos and sometimes that informs images coming up in your mind. And yeah, sometimes I have woke up and gone, whoa, I've just had like a really interesting visual or a really strong idea and I'm gonna write it down. I did go through a phase where I wrote down my dreams. Uh, it's just that it takes a little bit of time in the morning to do and most mornings now I'm just like, crap, I need to get up and work. So yeah, I would say that the hypnagogic state is definitely worth experimenting with if you are a creative or if you need to think creatively, if you need to problem solve. As for my short film, I'm not sure <laughs> what I'll bring into it yet, but I already have a ton of inspiration for it, so it's gonna be good regardless. Let me know if you've ever had a hypnagogic experience and let me know if I've ever appeared in one, cause I'm out there transcending space and time. See you next time.